Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing a glass painting. Now, I am painting March from To Your Eternity, which is an anime. It's very good. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend that you do so. Now, I have done glass paintings in the past. I'll put up some pictures for you to see and look at. The last time I did a glass painting was over like a year ago. So, I know how to do it. It's just like my skill level might have like deteriorated a bit. So this whole summer, I'm just going to be doing more glass painting since I bought a bunch of material to do it a year ago, but I never got around to do it. So that's my goal for the summer to just like use up all the glass and just do more glass paintings. This is my first time ever doing a glass painting on a letter-sized uh, piece of glass or, you know, from a frame that's letter size. To say the least, it's very interesting. So I know that the bigger the glass or just the, the bigger the canvas really, the more flaws you can see. So it has to be more precise, more on point, more, more perfect basically. And I knew that's going into it, um, but I didn't really um, estimate how much you could really see. So just beware if you do do a big piece of glass or whatever, just make sure that you're very precise with your painting skills <laughs> and your, the materials that you have. The materials I have are not by any means like the best or professional. Like I don't even have the right sized markers pretty much. My black marker that I'm using to trace here is just standard. I know I need a skinnier one, but I could never find a skinnier one at uh, Michael's or anywhere that I really looked. So I just made do with what I had. And the paintbrushes that you see me using in the future, or maybe now, I some of them I've had forever, and then some of them I got at Marshall's, but then again, the sizing is not as small as I need it to be still. So some of the, like some of the marks that I make or the painting strokes that I make, or anything like that, they go outside of the lines because the paintbrush is too big, um, the bristles are too big, or anything like that. And really, I just go in after with an X-Acto knife and I just like uh, scratch it away. Or maybe I'll use some nail polish remover. But just so you know, you just have to be precise and just acknowledge the materials that you're using. And if you do have the opportunity to get the right sizes, I highly recommend to do so. Because if I had the right sizing for uh, all the paintings I've done in the past and will do in the future, then I guarantee you my paintings would look like 10 times better. Now uh, it's the easy part, but also the hard part at the same time. So you have to make sure that you do this in the order of which when you flip it, you see the detail first, right? So you see the eyes, you see the highlights, you see all that stuff. And the last thing that you would do is the skin tone and made it in the hair. So I am going in just with white here and I'm just doing all the highlights. So the reference I use is a is fan art. Um, so it's not from the original like anime uh, 
digital creators themselves it's a piece of fan art that i found on pinterest or online both pretty much and so they have highlights which are just like white spec so i'm just doing that now the reason i say this is also the hardest part is because the specs are tiny and my paint bristles bristles brushes are not small enough most majority of the time so i have to go over and then go back later once it's dried with an exacto knife and like shape it to how or as close as it can be really and this is hard for me especially because most of the time i'm just lazy and i just want to get it done with and i'm very impatient when it comes to glass painting because i just want to see the finished result but if i rush through it 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 looks worse i've you know over the past the past i've done it just definitely looks worse when you rush it so you have to make sure that you have patience for this type of project however doing the shadows and the highlights and all of that jazz it definitely makes a difference because i've done a glass painting with highlight as, po as opposed to one without highlight and however the one without highlights is easier because you don't have to worry about mixing the shade and finding the perfect shadow color for that specific color which is very confusing for me because they all look the same eventually um you just go in and you just paint whatever color it is and you don't have to worry about the shadows which i like better but majority of the time it also looks better with the highlights so it's really like a pick and choose type of game and you have to figure out which one you feel like doing versus which one uh you just don't feel like doing you know it's very like trial and error based type of project in my opinion anyways During this point, I had been painting for around two and a half hours, and that might seem like, why did it take that long? Like, it shouldn't take that long. And I totally agree. Why should it take, like, I don't understand how it took me that long, but then at the same time I do because I have done this, like, a lot. Like, I've done this before, so it also took me a long time then, but this time it take took me even longer because of how much bigger the canvas was. Normally I would have done like an eight by 10 or um, five by 11, I think. I don't, that probably isn't right, but I've done just like the little small ones, like the pictures I showed you earlier. But this one is a lot bigger and wider and more range and room for error. So um, it took me a lot longer. Plus I was also waiting in between like when I was doing the shadows to make sure that it dried before I added another layer or decide, decided to do another color that might have gone right beside it. So I, all that combined took me a long time and we're not even halfway done, <laughs> which is the funny part. We're not even, we're not even close to being done.
Here I am doing the undertone for her hair, which it was very confusing because the printer printed out one color and then the photo reference on my phone looked like a whole different color. So I just went with the darkest one I could find. Like, I just went with the darkest color, what color I thought it looked like in the picture on my phone. So that's what I went with. But later I find out that when I put on just the regular brown for the rest of her hair, it looks horrible. Like the color in her hair is like 10 times lighter than the undertone of the shadow. And it doesn't look like a shadow. It just looks like she got a really bad hair dye. Like she just, they just butchered her hair at the salon. So later I have to go and scrape that off and try and salvage what I have done. I haven't done that yet, so I can't really tell you if it turned out great right now. But um, yeah, trial and error, like I said. So it's been like, I mean, we're just like five hours-ish. This is what we have so far. I think it looks pretty similar. I don't know if the camera's picking it up as well as I see it in real life. So you like, you just put it away from the sun. You can't see it, but I'm putting it away from the sun and it looks actually like pretty decent for my first like big uh, letter-sized painting. You know, cause you can see more of the flaws with the bigger it is, so I'm proud of myself. and. I'm gonna let the shirt dry, let the headband dry, and um, then all we have to do is do the hair, the face, and the hand. Now it's the next day. I let what I had previously dry overnight and um, that was a smart thing to do because I was trying to cram it all into one day. Thank goodness I did not because then I would have been frustrated at 12 a.m. when it looks garbage when I found out about her hair. So I let it dry and the next day I continued to work on it. I could see, like the first thing I saw was like when it dried, I could see that you can still see through the paint a bit. So I just went over that and um, that really did like save me because if I didn't and I did it all while it was still wet, I would have the illusion that it was dry and like you couldn't see through it when in reality you could and then it would look like worse than what it turned out, you know? So definitely be patient during this whole process and it will pay off. We're gonna forget about the hair for now because I will go back and fix that. But the skin tone was another thing I was proud of myself for because the tan color that I had was definitely not her skin tone. Like just like out of the out of the um, jar, it was not the right skin tone. So I had to lighten it. So I used white and I mixed that, of course. But I was pretty surprised. Like I got the um, her exact skin tone pretty much like as close as I could ever get without going too pale. So yeah. You know, that's that's a silver lining in this whole debacle. Proud of myself for that. It's been a whole day and I let it dry and when I flipped it over I realized that you know the hair was horrible and completely trash. So I scraped it all off and then I just reapplied the brown paint as 
or I added a little bit of darkness and then I reapplied it. So that's what I did and the result I think is like 10 times better than what it was before. So I'm very proud of myself for that. My first time glass painting in over a year and the fact that it wasn't a letter sized glass painting. Yeah, I think I did pretty good. Yeah.